What's up YouTube? I just received the Xeon Weeble Lab yesterday and man, I was stoked about it. In fact, I'm using it right now as a tripod and what's great about it is that I can look at the screen when it's tethered to my phone and see exactly where am I in the frame, am I in the shot and I'll definitely guide you guys through how to set that up. So really what I wanted to do is put this video together to explain how to connect your app to the Weeble, how to connect your camera to the Weeble that's connected to your phone so you can see yourself or you can see what the camera is looking at, adjust different things, press to record, things like that. Um, it took me maybe an hour or two Get the tripod. We figure out exactly how to upgrade things. There are a lot of things that sort of irked me and irritated me in the beginning. But honestly, now that that's in the past, the, the using the Weeble is actually not that bad. It's actually really good. It's smooth. It's light. Wow, this is tiny. Holy cow. And a lot of the benefits that everyone has already spoken about are all within use and and none of them really lied about how good the gimbal is it, it performs really well it's just that the uh, the onboarding process is absolutely terrible i don't understand how a, a, a majorly successful company like xian can really uh, forego customer onboarding and totally have onboarding out the window and still yet people come back to their product i mean i guess that's a testament to uh, their product and what they're producing, but honestly, like, you know, if you're an app, you can get a lot of I guess that when you open the box, you know exactly what to do, how to do things, where to do things, and look at all the reviews out there, it's terrible. Uh, I think it's a two star or something like that, which is unfortunate because a lot of it is about the fact that there's no phone holder. Um, there are no instructions. No one actually knew what the password was when you first logged into the Wi-Fi. Which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My setup right now is the A7 III with the 55 millimeter Zeiss lens, and I also have the Video Micro Rode mic on top of that as well. When you compare the Ronin S to the Weeble Lab, the size is very different. I mean, obviously the Weeble Lab can hold less weight; it's only six pounds, uh, three kilograms that it can hold up to. But carrying case is also obviously a little bit different. A slimmer profile from a length standpoint and height standpoint it's pretty similar but the width is just a little bit smaller now one of the drawbacks here is that if you're holding the gimbal with your left hand it's actually really difficult to use the trigger button because the focus dial is on the left side and so it kind of gets in the way of you pressing the button another downfall is that the controls are within your palms when you're holding it so sometimes it does shift it around and happened to me maybe once or twice okay so my favorite mode actually is just being locked here so let's just set it straight this is where i want to be hit lock and that way like if you go this way it's going to stay straight you can do it like that that is going to look forward and what's good about that is if you're moving this way and you actually wanna, you know, if you get jittery or if you go down, at least it's looking straight. But if you wanna like make a quick turn or you wanna curve out, what I do is just hold this button and then it goes into follow mode. So it goes follows or wherever you wanna go and then right when you let go, boom. So you can see how useful this is if you're going down. I'm holding it again, it's still unlocked. But that way, hold it straight, boom, and turn. Okay, so your standard is actually just pan follow mode, which is PF, and you should have the lock on the side up. And what that does is it's actually allowing you to pan left and right, but it won't let you pan up and down. So that tilt axis is locked, unless, again, you hold this button. So if you want, as you can see, you can go left and right here. It's actually pretty quick, um, but what you can do is go up and down. So you hold this, Let's just say, if you want to look up, and then it gets stuck on that new uh, focal point, so you want to hold it again. And it's surprisingly intuitive, you know, actually when I was using it, um, when you want to turn, you hold it, and then it turns with you. It turns with you, it turns up. 
Okay, so another mode that we have here is the POV mode. Yeah, just press it. And it basically follows up, down, left, right. So everything is unlocked for you. And actually, if you go like this. Oh, don't do that. Now there's also a mode called Vortex Mode. And you can get to it by pressing POV twice really quickly. So I'm gonna press it. Quickly. And you could here do the, the Ronin S style 360, which is kind of nuts, but if you ever really need it, I, I don't know. I don't think this thing is properly balanced because it keeps. Okay, so the other mode, the go button is, I, I don't know why it's called phone go, but it's, it's phone go mode. And so if you press, actually you can't even press it, you gotta hold it to do quick jerky movements up and down, but it doesn't go all the way. Like, if you see, it goes like really quickly. I think this is for like sports mode, but it's weird because you have to hold it. I guess if you do it one way, it's okay. Now I also wanted to show you what uh, some of the tricks that you do with this front trigger. If you, again, if you hold it, it goes into follow mode. You can follow up, down, left, right. Uh, if you press it twice, it centers it, so let's just go like that. Centers it. If you press it three times, actually, the selfie button. Which is kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. It's probably like way too close to my face because I'm at 55 millimeter, but. If you press it again, it goes back to straight. So there you have it. There you go. Okay, so some of the things that I have here, pretty interesting, I'm gonna swing by over here. Um, the Wi-Fi was already connected. Uh, you gotta also connect with Bluetooth, I believe, and that's when it first started. So it first loaded up with the Bluetooth, and then you wanna connect your Wi-Fi uh, with the Weeble Wi-Fi by pressing this Wi-Fi button up here. Password is 1234567 so I guess anyone can connect to my Weeble if they wanted to. Um, and yeah, so actually I can turn on and off the recorder by pressing this button. And as you can see, before I even upload or I turned on uh, this app and connected, it showed me how long it was already recording for before. So I turned on the recorder before I wanted to set up this um, session right here. So, um, some other things that I have here, I actually don't know what this button up here does. I've been, I've been pushing it and I don't know, nothing. I 
I mean, it's just not, these apps are not intuitive or these icons are not intuitive. I mean, come on, come on. Uh, maybe I can hold it down. No, uh, nothing. All right, so this button up here actually transmits the video. You can turn it on and off. This button in the middle here turns off everything else on the side. So what's good about that is you can actually see just the image if you wanted to. Um, this button, I don't, I don't really know what that button does either, so I'm gonna just leave it. And again, I, if anyone else wants to tell me exactly what these things do, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, and that's what the community is for, right? That's what the community is for. Uh, so here's just the battery of the Weeble on the left, the battery of my phone on the right. Settings here, oops, settings here on the strength of the Xenon Crane. I'm sorry, this, this Xenon Weeble. Um, I'm sorry, before I get into that, let me go over here. Uh, you can control it up and down here using this. And I think it looks like the focus is slower to catch if you're looking at this video on the monitor. But if you look back at the LCD panel, it actually catches focus just as fast as it usually does. I think it just takes a little bit of time for it to transmit onto your phone. Kind of interesting. Um, so don't be worried, but still, I think that kind of defeats the purpose of having the monitor for accurate um, focus on the subject or whatever you're doing. Especially if, if, if you're doing an interview or something like that, right, and you're moving around. But anyway, uh, I'm going to use this actually on Saturday to um, film my friend's uh, Miss Chinatown video, so we'll see how that goes. You can go left and right using this guy over here. And what's interesting is I can go left and right on this. I I don't know if it's because I'm not I I didn't um, balance the gimbal correctly, but it's I don't know. It's just left and right doesn't work here, so I got I got to figure that out. That's on my to do list. And if I figure it out before I publish, I'll just put it on the side or the comments or um, the description below. So if you want to reset, press this button right here, and you go. It's actually really quick. It like just whips there. And so I'm not touching anything and you see how it's panning slowly left and right. I have a feeling that because the gimbal is not perfectly balanced, it's taking a little bit while to adjust back to perfectly straight and centered. So I'm gonna just bring it back so you're not looking. <laughs> I'm gonna crotch the entire time. And even just like this toggle is not the easiest. It's not, it, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult um, to get it exactly straight. So I would still stick with the joystick on the um, Weeble or just use whatever motion that you have. Uh, okay, so let's go to the side here. Oh, actually before, I'm sorry. These are the settings that you have below. And again, you can't change it by tapping this. All it is is just showing you what you're at. I guess that's useful, but you can tap it, so it's weird that like the, the colors change. I mean, that's just not intuitive. <laughs> All right, so let's go into the side here. This one. Am I not tapping? Nothing's happening on that one, okay. This one should be your shutter speed. Is that even change? Oh, okay, so it's not. Oh, you know what? I'm in, I'm in uh, program auto, so I, I should switch to manual to do this thing too. Um, but anyway, at least you can see what exactly it is. So this one, and I know that when you're switching this, the number doesn't change as you're moving it, which is really inconvenient. Um, so like it doesn't change, and once you line it to a spot, it changes the number, which is really inconvenient because you don't even know what shutter speed you're gonna go at, or you don't really know what's what is changing to. So. I feel like the app development team is just not on par there. So this one is the uh, f-stop. This one, wait, what is this one? Oh, this is the EV. Oh, thank you, Wall Street. Uh, ISO, again, similar, but you can start to dial it in. If it's at 200, um, you can't see it change until you move it, kind of like that. So. I thought auto was on. I thought ISO was on auto, but I guess you can change. So you're at 25.6. That actually, I don't think it's changing, is it? It should. I didn't turn those on. White balance, you can change it to whatever you want. 
think it's yeah. So I just wanted the easiest settings for this because I didn't want to fuss around with it. Um, this one is just bring it. Oh, the histogram there. This one you can change the grid. Now I have it at three by three, so I can just figure out rule of thirds pretty easily and go center things like that. So I'm gonna keep it there. This one's just additional information, I guess. Uh, and this, I don't even. What, what, what is what is this? I don't even. Oh oh oh! You know what? I couldn't even see it. Okay, here we go. Oh, I think this is for um, the controls. If you have the follow focus and the, maybe if your camera can hook up to the. If your lens can hook up to the app so you can zoom in and out, I'm actually not too sure. I think that'd be pretty interesting to see someone with the capabilities to show that. So um, yeah, I mean, that's my real quick tutorial on the app and I've been using it for maybe like in total 30 minutes. And so I'm really not a professional, not an expert at this, but that's kind of my first instinct take on some of the app features. At minimum, I like the fact that you can change ISO, shutter speed, things like that when you're on the go. Um, and yeah, I think that drawback on the HD monitor or on the monitor here is that the focus kind of takes a little bit longer to show up on this video image. But maybe that's going to change with the updates coming forward. I'm not too sure. This was the first update that I had um, right out the box. And so it's updated hopefully to the newest release. I mean, that's what it says on the app. And yeah, I'll go through that a little bit more in detail later. So thanks for this part. On to the next part.